Hey everybody, Arnaldo Wofferman here. Today we're going to talk about LED lights and why they're not the most efficient lamp out there. Dun dun dun. Okay, so if you've seen some of my videos, particularly where I talk about any kind of R-rated fixture, and I'll mean R like, must be 18 or somebody with 18 or older to see it, I mean R like 2R, 5R, and any of those type, you know, the 17R and so forth. Why are those lamps, even though they're not LEDs, more efficient than an LED? And really, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, first, let's go ahead and break down what everything else. First of all, you've got your traditional 2R lamp, and then you have your LED. Now, your LED, why do we love LED? Well, there's no filament, there's no gas. It's, it's just magic. I mean, really, that's what's in there. No, in all seriousness, LED, right? You plug it in, you light it up, and it doesn't really dim. It uses what we call pulse width modulation, where it's strobe. So when you have it full on, it's LED on. But now we're gonna dim it a little bit, so or dim it, so it's actually doing this. But it's doing it really fast. So fast, your eyes can't see it. But your eyes can tell that it's not solid on, so it just sees it as a blur. So what does a blur look like in a light? Well, it looks like something slightly dimmer. And that's essentially how those lights dim. The R fixtures don't dim because it's, gas or any fixture that holds them have what we call a electronic or not electronic they have a manual or motorized dimmer and it's basically two little plates that go like this and they dim so if you're using a spot fixture and you want a really nice clean dim well led is going to be your point for that but I keep saying that it's not as efficient as a 2R. So why is that? Why are fixtures like the Warlock or the Visi Roll? Why are they 2R versus LED? Well, you see, there's different kinds of LEDs, right? You've got your traditional LED, you've got your tri-LEDs. Now, tri-LED is not just one color that, you know, magically changes. There's three individual colors in there. Same thing with quad, hex, etc. You also have surface mount LEDs, and we've seen these on the Freak 5s. The Freak 16s, Freak Matrix, tons of other fixtures use a surface mount LEDs or SMDs. And then we have the new popular COB LED. Now COB stands for chip on board. And if that still doesn't really clarify what that means, well, let's put it in sound terms. Chip on board is basically the LED version of line arrays, right? Line array, you don't have one speaker or one driver, you've got multiple ones done in an array, hence line array. And the point is that they literally, the sound waves coming out of each other work with each other and you get nice sound that's pushed all the way to the back at a nice even volume all the way through. That's really it in a very, very rough uh, nutshell, but that's essentially how that works. Well, COB is the same way. COB, some of these chips have 99 LEDs and a little chip about that big. It's crazy, right? So COB LEDs have tons of different little chips all working together to create just one really wide wash beam with a good throw. It's really a miracle that you get a nice long throw and you get a wide wash. So why can't you use that in a fixture such as a Visi Roll or the uh, Hybrid 2R or the Warlock? You probably could, but it doesn't matter whether you're using COB or a traditional LED or even a high powered LED with you know a color wheel. The honest truth is that LED light, first of all, it goes everywhere, okay? But there's more than one source inside an LED chip. If you actually look at an LED chip, whether it's COB or not, there's actually multiple ones. Even like an SMD uh, LED, like the ones in the Freak 5s, yet yeah, that little LED chip has five individual sources coming out of it. So what happens is when you try to put it on a fixture, now you need enough lenses and you need basically to be able, you need to be able to get, just get that all focused into one tight beam. Well, how do you do that? How do you get... A, uh, a beam that's going everywhere, right? Because LED is going everywhere. How do you get that focused into one type beam when one source, you know, let's say there's one chip here is coming from here, one chip's coming there, one chip's coming here, one's over here, one's over here. Now you got to get all that because it's going to go everywhere. And now you got to focus it into one nice tight beam. Essentially, that's really it. The 2R lamp, yes, it's just, it's just like any type of bulb. It's going to go everywhere, but it's coming out of one source and one source only. So you get that tight beam effect right out of it. More than anything else, it's also technology. Uh, 2R lamps, 5Rs, are going to be brighter than LED. And the LED that would be as equivalent bright brightness of the 2R, so for example, let's say we have a 2R 136 watt, right? And let's say that couple of years from now, they make a, a LED chip that's just as bright as a 2R. 
and we're able to, you know, we have to use more lenses on the LED side. So that's going to bring up the cost of the fixture itself. But now you have, okay, so now we've got the LED chip. How much more wattage is it pulling? Well, it's a 400 watt LED, and those do exist currently. It's a 400 watt LED versus a 136 watt two watt lamp for the same brightness. But this fixture is going to be cheaper because it doesn't need as many lenses to focus all those individual LED points that are coming out of one chip. Well, it's kind of a no-brainer. Oh, but lamps burst. Yes, they do. And the 2R, the 5 something, they violently burst. Okay, this isn't just like the traditional, remember the old school ELCs with the filament, which just goes, that's it. No, it's like, boom, and it goes everywhere. Okay. Not that bad. But if you've ever blown a projector bulb, a xenon bulb, anything like that, yeah, it's kind of like that because it's gas, it's pressurizing. And when it's ready to go, it's ready to go. So they really underestimate, you know, what, you know, let's say they, the, the bulb says, okay, we're going to get about maybe 8,000 hours out of it. So they're going to tell you 6,000 hours before you replace it. Because after that 6,000 hours, you're on your own. Now I'm using 8,000 just as an um, example. So don't think you're going to get 8,000 hours out of a 2R. You may, you may not. I've seen some where I get 6,500 and then it popped on me. Don't ask why. And I've seen some where I get way more than that. After 6,000 hours, you replace it. Now, the bulbs, you know, depending where you come, where you get them from, they can cost a little bit of money, but they're still really cheap. Uh, so, for example, let's say you spend, oh, I don't know, $115 on a 2R bulb. Like, man, Arnold, that's a lot for 6,000 hours. How much is 6,000 hours, really? Let's break out our handy-dandy calculator. We got 6,000 hours, and let's say you're running four-hour events, okay? But you still want to program the lot and all that. So, let's say eight hours for every event that you have it on. That's 750 events before you have to change the bulb, okay? Now, let's say that it, the bulb cost you $120, right? $120 divided by 750. It's 16 cents every time that you're running the light is how much you're paying for a new bulb. Really? Really? We're, we're going to worry about that? Seriously. Even if it was half the life, that's still only 32 cents uh, every time you run it. That's, that's crazy cheap. And what you're doing is you're saving money because you're not having to buy more advanced technology to really focus those LEDs into one tight beam. And it does, you know, exist. There are beam fixtures such as the NO beam LED that take a beam source and do into a nice beam, but it's still a fat beam. You want those tiny little beams that almost look like a laser because it's that really tiny and precise. You got to use a 2R. A technology, I'm not saying it's impossible, but physics and technology are saying, uh-uh, go with the 2R. But aside from just the cost of making the light, and obviously that cost is ultimately passed down to you, the consumer, it's what's going to be more energy efficient. A fixture with a 400 watt LED or a 2R, which is 136, and it can be just as bright. Again, I'm not saying 400 watts is equivalent to it, but I'm telling you, it takes a really bright LED to really keep up with it, or even especially a 5R. And then for those of you that are asking, well, why are they using a 2R, not a 5 or 17? I don't really want to go too into that yet. That's for a video later on. But long story is there's differing gaps for the arc in between. And that also changes how well you can focus or how tight that beam is ultimately going to come out. So I took a pretty advanced topic. I mean, I can really get nerdy into it if you want to. Heck, my, my buddy Ben Stowe, who he and I have chatted this about before, have gone, you know, I mean, he, he'll definitely go over my head on it. But I did my best here to try to bring this down to an easy to understand level. So let me know if I did a good job on that. If I need to further clarify something else, thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends. Look, I keep saying this every single time and I really appreciate how fast my channel is growing thanks to you guys. So I really do appreciate your love, hate, support, whatever the case may be. You guys are watching, and ultimately, that's all that matters. Thanks so much again. You guys have a great night, and God bless.